Okay. Harsha has given you the access. Okay, now we can end it. Okay, now. Shall we start, guys, then? So before I start, let me check whether you can able to see the screen. The audio is clear. If at all there are problems, just say me now. Everything is clear, sir. Good. Very good. So as I told you in the last class, we will be starting with the gas. So gas are very important for which covers almost, uh, I can say, 40% of your DME2 syllabus. So you can attend two module questions from the gas itself. So totally, we'll be studying about four different gears here. The number one is spur gear. Second one is helical. Third is bubble. And fourth is worm. So all the four gears, if you study, the 40 marks are in your pocket. And the concepts which are related to the gears are also very, very simple. You need not worry much about it. Um, there are no uh, too much tedious uh, formulas to be remembered. Everything is available in the data handbook. Uh, provided you must be well versed with uh, reading and taking the formulas from the data handbook. So I hope everyone is having the data handbook with you right now. Correct? At least you can raise your hands. I will come to how many of you are active. Me too. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Okay. Good, good. No. So if you don't have the data handbook, I have even made the panel arrangement for that. You can go log into the Google Classroom. I have already updated a soft copy of data handbook, uh, which covers the entire part of your gas, all the four gas, spur, helical, bubble, and bomb. So you can download it, and you can just uh, access it from your laptop or your mobile. It's up to you how you access it. If you don't have your data handbook with you, OK? If you have it, it is well and good. Okay. Said so that, we will start with the gas. So how many of you know about the gas before I start it? We shall have a small discussion about it, and then we will go in depth about it. So what is a gear for you? Where have you seen that? What is its use? Anyone? Okay, Mega have given you the access. Yes. What do you think? the gear is used for. Have you seen a gear, first of all? Transformation. So if you think about a mechanical engineering, wherever uh, there is a chance of designing a logo for mechanical engineering, everywhere they will just portray the figure of a gear, isn't it? So it shows the importance of a gear in a total mechanical engineering systems. So gear is such an important thing, which is uh, helpful to transmit the power from one end to the other end in the least possible space. And with maximum amount of efficiency, the whole sort of torque can be transferred from one shaft to the other with ease. So that is why gear forms a such an important mechanical component in every mechanical engineering system you observe nowadays. Okay. Uh, so how many types of gears have you seen? I have uh, told four things, which is spur, helical, bevel, and bomb. So these are the four different types of gears. So how many types of gears have you seen till now? It might be in your lab. It might be somewhere else in a workshop or somewhere. Where have you seen the gears? Watch, yes, very good. So all the timing, uh, the needle for the seconds, the needle for the minute, and the needle for the hour has to move in a perfect 
intermittent motion, isn't it? To show you the exact time. So all those timing of the needles is being controlled by gears. So you can control a system with that particular precision using the gears. Any other examples? Railway gate controller. Or what exactly you mean by this, Simon? Yes, 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 got it, got it. So you're talking about a system where he rotates a railway gate that will in turn uh, help the railway gate to move up and down, isn't it? There you have seen the gears, I guess, right? Yes, sir. Those exactly are called as spur gears, uh, Saiban. So they are parallel to each other. Very common type of gears are spur gears. We'll discuss about it one by one. Any other? examples do you know please to interact with me the class will be interesting otherwise it will be boring as usual so make sure you interact with me okay any other examples you have seen the gas in your daily life Sugar cane machine, very good. There you have seen a uh, good number of gears to crush it, where uh, torque is being enhanced there. Gearbox, very good. Escalators, okay. Escalators, they will be having a pulleys and gears, correct? Cycles, okay. As fun, okay. Gear cycles. Uh, more often, it uses a uh, chain drive, isn't it? So, the word gear cycle is being there, I agree that, but uh, I think gears are not being used in the cycles, I guess. Okay. It is just a sprocket, two to three different sprockets with that. The chain will be shifted from one sprocket to the other sprocket. Hand drills, correct. Lathe machines, very good. So in all these cases, uh, you can see the functioning of a gear. Now, you would be, in, after this particular module is being finished, you will be in a position to design a gear, what material it should have, what angles, different angles should it possess, what are the different strength it has to be possessed for a gear, you will come to know at the end of the module. So make sure you learn this module uh, with a clear-cut uh, identity so that you can, it will be very much helpful in your project design also. Suppose if you are working on gear, in your project, in a final year project, so all these design calculations can be incorporated over there. So setting that, we will directly jump into the syllabus now. Introduction to gears. So gears is defined as a two-third wheel, which transmits the power of motion from one shaft to another shaft by the successive engagement of a teeth. You know this, there will be a teeth at the both ends. So one teeth will push the other teeth, so thereby causing the continuous motion. So hence the gear drives are called as a positive drives. In any pair of gears, smaller one is called as a pinion and the larger one is called as a gear. So this particular point here is damn important. Okay. So let me hide it. The smaller one is called as a pinion and the larger one is called as a gear. So it might be a driver or a driven, irrespective of that. So there are two gears if you observe here. This is one gear which is driving this particular gear here. Okay. So I would name this as one and I would name this as two. Correct. So always the smaller gear is, which one is smaller? One is smaller or two is smaller? Which one is smaller? One or two? So one is generally a smaller one. So the smaller gear is always called as a pinion and the larger one, rather V, is known as a gear. Keep this in mind. Irrespective of whether it is driven or driving. Suppose you can give the power uh, to the pinion so that the gear would rotate by that or in the vice versa. You can give the power to a gear so that your pinion would rotate. So vice versa is possible. Let us see the classifications of the gears now. Okay. <clears throat> According to the position of axis, uh, shaft axis I can say. So parallel in the sense the shaft axis would be something like this. So one gear would 
be present here and another gear be present something like this so if you observe the both the axes are parallel to each other that means these axes would never intersect so such type of is a called as a parallel axis and the one is intersecting intersecting in the sense <clears throat> these two axes would be intersecting uh, somehow like this. so it comes in the case of a bevel gear what is bevel gear the gear would be something like this okay okay something like this so this would rotate like this and parallelly if it transfers Okay, fine. So if we give the power to this particular shaft here, even this would rotate like this. If you observe, the axes are intersecting here, isn't it? So both the axes are intersecting at this particular point. So this forms an intersecting shaft axis. So non-parallel, non-intersecting. Non -intersecting. So two shafts would be non-parallel, and there will be non-intersecting, like in case of a worm gear that will come to know once that particular part is being dealt. peripheral velocity of the gear so peripheral velocity is nothing but the velocity at which this particular points move so generally gear should be rotating in a uh, rotary motion that you can measure the speed of it in the rpm is and at similar speed if you convert into meters per second okay if you convert rpm into meters per second then it is known as a peripheral velocity so peripheral velocity can be again classified into low velocity medium velocity and high velocity depending upon the different uh, values of peripheral velocity next is according to the type of gearing so one is external gears and other one is internal gears so how i can okay so external gears are very much common something like this correct so external gears would engage externally internal gears is something like this okay so most probably the wall clock should use such type of gearing arrangement so this particular gear here will just bend up around, around like this if it move all around like this internally so such type of gears are called as internal gears rack and pinions uh, something like this there would be a rack okay there would be a rack like this and there would be a pinion a small gear with a tilted wheel all over it something like this okay so if you rotate this uh, i mean if you move this rack to and fro your pinion would rotate so such type of arrangement is known as a rack and pinion type according to the position of teeth this is very important some of them will be having a straight teeth like this all over the gear and some of them will be having an inclined teeth like this all over the gear and some of them would be having a curved teeth something like this so curved teeth are most common types of gears so because this curved teeth is again bifurcated into two different uh, aspects one is we will see once that particular thing is that okay now we will go with advantages and disadvantages of the gear so it's uh, let's see make okay okay can anyone just read uh, advantages of the gear here the first point can anyone just read this Nitish Kumar. Yes, sir. Read it. It transmits the exact velocity ratio. It transmits the exact velocity ratio because it says uh, there is no slip in a gear drive. So if you observe a belt drive, the speed if you connect through a belt, the speed of this if it is hundred rpm. 
then the speed of this will not be exactly 100 rpm it would be something around 98 to 99 rpm okay there is a difference in the velocity so velocity ratio is not exact here so there is a depression why this happens because of the slip that occurs between uh, the belt and the pulley so this particular problem is not there in a gear drive since it uh, the toothed uh, system is there, so exact velocity ratio can be transferred. Next. Can be used to transmit very large amount of power. Large amount of power can be transmitted that cannot be uh, transferred in a belt drive. If you transfer a large amount of power using a belt drive, it would definitely cause a slip over there. So that's why gears are used to transfer the large amount of power. Next one can be used. Can be used for smaller center distance between the shafts. Smaller center distance between the shafts. So, so if the center distance between the shafts is very small, even then also think about your watch. Okay, for the smaller, smaller center distance, the gas can be used. Next one, it has got high efficiency, reliable service, reliable service in the sense it will be just moving on, working on for years together without any interruption. Just if you have to provide some lubrication for it, that's enough. So it will be just moving on for years together. So that's why it is more reliable, and it is having a compact layout. So again, think of about the watch. In the watch also, a small, small gears can be used. It can be made a very compact in design so that uh, the transmission would occur in a very small little space. Now we shall go with the disadvantages. Simon, can you just read the disadvantages for us? Simon? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, it disadvantages. Is costly, it is costly since it requires, it is costly since since it requires special tools, special special tools and equipment to manufacture, manufacture them. them. So, in manufacturing that gear is not so easy job. So we have to require a good amount of milling and planar machines to do it. So that's why the manufacturing cost of the gear increases. Even the cost of the gear also is increased. For the belt, it is not so you can just uh, connect uh, two pulleys with a belt, your job is done. For, but for the gear drives to work, for the gear drives to be used, you require a good amount of gears, which again, adds on to your cost. So that one thing is that. Second thing is error in cutting teeth may, yes, Saibal? Error in cutting teeth may cause vibration, vibration and noise during operation. Noise during the operations. Imagine uh, if the gear has 40 teeth, in those 40 teeth of a gear, any one particular teeth is in damaged condition. What happens? For every revolution, it would make an abrupt sound, isn't it? And think about 100 RPM. If the gear is rotating about 100 RPM, that means 100 times it would hit at the same point, creating an abrupt sound. So the machining of those teeth has to be at the precise level so that your gears are running at a smoother, smoother format. Okay, next one. Requires suitable lubricant for proper operation. For its operation. So definitely lubrication is required to run the gas or else the heat could be developed or else the friction would be more, wear and tear would be more. If you avoid all this, definitely there is a need of lubrication between the two. I told you, the, the curved, uh, this thing, uh, tooth profiles, isn't it? For this curved tooth profiles, you have two different tooth profiles to be understood. One is the cycloidal, the other one is the involute. So what is this uh, cycloidal tooth profile and what is involute tooth profile? I would just say you try to understand it. If you don't understand it also, no issue. It will never be asked in an examination. So make sure you understand it. Uh, if you don't understand it also, it is no problem. Okay, suppose. How does the involute tooth profile form? I would take a circle, okay, and I would take a small piece of a rod like this, okay. I would just place it, I would just place this particular rod here on the circle, okay. Now what I would do, I would just roll this particular thing onto the circle, 
okay now i would mark a point on this particular uh, line okay now if i just roll this particular line i am talking about this particular line on to the circle so whatever the profile it generates whatever the profile it generates that is known as involute profile got it what do you mean by involute profile yes have you understood what is involute profile and how it is generated okay please to respond okay the cycloidal tooth is a curve traced by the point circumference of a circle rolling r ah, what do you mean by a cycloidal now now for a cycloidal profile to be generated what you have to do you have to just make use of a plane surface like this on to which i will just place a circle now i mark a point on a circle getting my point i just mark a point on the circle and allow this particular circle to roll like this without slipping now what i do i just roll this particular circle just like rolling a ball onto a floor okay when this particular circle will roll on this particular platform what does it do it would generate a some sort of pattern isn't it and this particular pattern what it has generated is known as the cycloidal profile okay so these are two different profiles which you can generate just a minute Okay, so these two are two different profiles that you can generate. One is rolling a straight plane line onto a circular platform. Another rolling a circular thing on a straight line. Whatever the path it has been generated, those are categorized into two different paths, which is involute and cycloidal. Clear about this? Just to have a knowledge that said that will never be asked in the examination, but just to have an idea about the profiles, how it has generated. to enhance your general knowledge i'm just saying this got it any doubts in this good so please to respond guys otherwise it would be boring not for you but for me okay pressure angles we will discuss about this pressure angles first you before discussing the pressure angles you have to know certain parameters of the gap okay so that i would i have uh, i think yes look at this just try to see this particular picture and even you can find this particular picture in your data handbook on the first page itself okay just look at this and there are different uh, parameters which are just mentioned just look at those and see you could have uh, explain me any of these parameters just by looking at the diagram what he has uh, given us okay are you able to identify something are you able to explain something anyone everyone has to explain me any one parameter okay in a common language also it could have explained i want you to understand the things okay so understanding these parameters is uh, important so that's why i'm just saying you to visualize the content what you have been displayed analyze one parameter whichever you feel it as easy and same okay i could call any one
attendance is 52. <coughs> yes, sir, Ranjit. Ranjit. Are you there, Ranjit? Okay, Ranjit is not there, so let me mark him. Absent. Ranjit. Hello, sir. Did you talk about the Absent? Yes, I talked about the Karadra. Sir, I talked about the Karadra. I talked about the Karadra. Yes, sir. Sir, I talked about the Karadra. Very good. I talked about the these two parameters are the only Java parameter in regard to the head. Hello, sir. Clearance circle. Ah. Uh. In the clearance circle. Okay. Uh, Ruben. Yes, sir. Any parameter that you have recognized, that you have understood? Sir, pitch, sir. Pitch. What do you distance, mean by a pitch? Distance between two uh, consecutive, consecutive points. Uh, Very good. So if I just take uh, one particular point here, and the same other end of the tooth profile. So this is one tooth, correct? This is one tooth, and this is the other tooth. So I have taken, I have marked this particular point here. At the same point, if I mark on the other tooth, then if I measure the distance between these two points, and that is known as a pitch. Yes, sir. Good. Very good. Any other parameter that we have observed? Mohit. Hello. Hello. Ah, which parameter that uh, you have observed? I will talk to width of space what is that width of space it is uh, distance between two uh, teeth. two teeth isn't it very good so the distance between two teeth is nothing but the space width okay very good uh, parallax to it is the tooth thickness it is the dis uh, distance between the tooth itself okay how thick it is so if you observe there is a circle drawn like this correct and this particular circle is known as a pitch circle. So what is the speciality of this pitch circle is, on the pitch circle, the pressure angle would be zero. So wherever you go, on the pitch circle, the pressure angle is zero. So what do you mean by pressure angle? I would just explain in the next class, don't worry about it. So apart from that, if any other parameters you have discovered, you can just say me. Okay. Uh, Shashank, yes. Okay. Now, any parameter? Fillet radius. It is the. Uh, what do you mean by a fillet it, radius? It's a clearance radius between the face and the gear and the part, circular part. Okay. Shamil, I will come back to you. Okay, Shashank. It's not clear, we'll come back to you. Shamil, GV. Sir. Ah, yes, Shamil. Any parameter that you have noticed? Are you? Sir, addendum and addendum. Addendum. By uh, hello, 
Aris. Yes, sir. Hello. Ah, what do you mean by addendum, Aris? Like it's the distance from the pitch circle to the crust. Yes, exactly. So uh -huh. it is the distance between the pitch circle and the addendum circle. Addendum circle is the topmost circle. Didendum circle is the bottommost circle. So the distance between the addendum circle and the pitch circle is known as addendum. Similarly, the distance between the pitch circle and the didendum circle is known as didendum. Okay. So by the next class, please uh, look into this particular diagram. Understand the different parameters of it. Okay, and look what are the different formulas that you can get from the data handbook. We will discuss and straight away jump into the problems in this class. Okay, so understand this particular diagram. We will we'll discuss a few points right into this and then we will directly jump into the problems in the next class. Okay, till then, take care. Have a nice day ahead. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.